Hello and welcome to Lamplighter. Today is February 15. Today begins the section of our reading where Moses' days leading the people of Israel are coming quickly to an end. Remember that Moses and Aaron struck the rock to bring forth water in their anger rather than honor God as holy in the presence of the Israelites. And God tells them because they did not honor him as holy when they had that opportunity to show the Israelites that God was always to be honored and revered and respected, Moses and Aaron are prohibited from entering the promised land. Now, Aaron has already died and been buried at the top of Mount Hor, and now Moses is nearing the end of his life. We saw yesterday that Moses is insistent upon a successor being appointed, and Joshua has been appointed to lead the people into the land of Israel. Now Moses that knows that his days are numbered with the Israelites, and so he wants to give them some advice. He wants to make several farewell addresses to the people almost like a parent would be giving advice to children that are leaving the house. Moses wants to make sure that the people remember all of the experiences they've had, and he goes through a brief history of all that has happened since the children of Israel were set free from their bondage in Egypt. Now, you may be asking, why is so much of the text repeated at this point? Why is Moses going over again all of these details of their journey? Well, remember, all of those who rebelled, all of those who whined and complained when they heard the negative report of the spies, have now died out. This is a new generation of people that will be embarking upon Canaan. Moses wants to make sure that they learn some lessons from the mistakes of their forefathers, from their parents and grandparents. As they get ready to take possession of the land of promise, Moses even says things to them like this, you are as numerous as the stars in the sky. Remember that expression? It's a promise that God made to Abraham that he would make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. So everything Moses is saying has a specific purpose to awaken memories of stories that have been told, of legacies that have been passed on from generation to generation. He wants the people to understand that the common denominator through all of this is God himself. So he reminds them of the reason for the 40 years of wandering. It was because they questioned God. They didn't obey God. They didn't trust God. Now he reminds them of God's power over Egypt it was God who brought them out of Egypt. It was God who parted the Red Sea. It was God who took care of them miraculously in the desert all of these years. And it's God who will be giving them marching orders. It's God who's going to go before them into the land of Canaan. It's God who's going to provide for them this land and give them victory over the people that already exist there. Moses is hammering this point home that this story is about God. He even reminds them about the Transjordan tribes, the ones that are going to stay on the east, that they have made promises that they'll cross the Jordan River also and go to battle with the rest of the Israelites until the land is conquered and the tribes each have their division of land. Now, Moses even reminds the people on more than one occasion and even points a finger of blame at them that he's not going to be going with them because they put him up to it. They caused him to lose his temper. He didn't honor God, and now he will not be able to see the promised land. He tells them that when they go into the land, they're going to be following Joshua, and they need to understand that Joshua is the new leader, and a specific command is given to Joshua. Notice this one on page 207 of our reading today, under the section of agreement for cooperation, way down at the bottom of the page, the last paragraph. At that time, I commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. So Moses is even instructing Joshua, God is going to lead the people. 
God is going to lead you in conquest in these battles. So put your faith and your confidence in him. These people need to understand that everything God says they need to do. They don't need to add to his commands or take away from his commands. These are to be a distinct people. I want you to notice on page um, the third paragraph under the call to obey on page 208. He says, see, I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Observe them carefully for this will show your wisdom and understanding to all the nations who will hear about all these decrees and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. What other nation is so great as to have their gods near them? No other nation is as great to near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him. And what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today? This is what makes the people distinct. Their God is going with them. Their God has given them specific instructions and laws, and the other nations will stand up and take notice. God is the one who brought them out of Egypt. God wants them to be his inheritance. He wants no other gods to be present, no idols to be built. He understands that idolatry is one of the greatest threats facing this people, not only this people, but their descendants, because there will be idolatry among all the other nations. God says he is a jealous God, and there are to be no other gods in the lives of these people. That's how they will be successful. But God also understands that they're going to fail from time to time, and God is also a merciful God. I want to close our time together by reading a longer section from our reading. And again, I know you've read this, but this is critically important that we see this section entitled Honor as Chosen Nation at the bottom of page 209. Ask now about the former days long before your time from the day God created man on the earth. Ask from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Has any other people heard the voice of God speaking out of fire as you have and lived? Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by miraculous signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds, like all the things the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Besides him, there is no other. From heaven, he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth, he showed you his great fire and you heard his words from out of the fire. Because he loved your forefathers and chose their descendants after them, he brought you out of Egypt by his presence and his great strength to drive out before you nations greater and stronger than you and to bring you into their land and to give it to you for your inheritance as it is today. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth below, there is no other. Then he goes on to say, keep his decrees and commands, which I'm giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. Now that was a kind of longer reading, but I wanted to make sure you hear what Moses is saying. This is all about God, and it's not even what God has done in your generation, but what God has been doing from the beginning of time to get his people to this place, to this land, to be their God and to deliver them so that they can have relationship with him and live in peace and harmony with one another and with him, worshiping him as the only true God. What a grand story it has already been up to this point. The story is about God. Isn't it great to be a lamplighter? His word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. I hope you have a blessed day.